Hi, this is Betsy Walker. I am here today to show you a little bit about OOV so that you know how to get started on the OOV. First of all, you want to make sure you're fitted correctly on the OOV so that the, the curves fit your spine well. And if you need some help with that, you can look at the OOV reference guide as well. They have some weights and, and heights on there for that. So first of all, what I want to show you is a little bit about is um, how to get on the OOV and, and how to know that you're on it because it's really important that you're on it well so that you don't uh, have neck tension or it's not uncomfortable. I always tell people in my classes, if you are uncomfortable, please tell me because it's no good if you're uncomfortable. We need to reset you, find the right place. And sometimes that takes a few tries, but once you start using the OOV over and over again, you kind of know where you are, where you need to be on the OOV. So give it a try, um, be patient at first, and then we'll get you in the right position and make sure that you're comfortable. Also, it is important that you bring a towel or something for underneath your neck to class because you want to have your neck supported. And as you get to use the OOV more and more, you may use a, you know, a different amount of support, but at first you want to make sure you have a few things available. So what I like to do is have a hand towel folded up, or I also um, will sometimes use a deflated ball. So this is just a, a kid's ball that I've deflated a bit, so um, it can be put underneath the head or the neck. So those are some really good tools to have uh, when you come to class. Some of the other things that I might suggest you bring to class um, you know, I love to use these things. Uh, if you don't have them, it's not, you know, a game changer, but they're good to have if you have them available or if you want to pick them up. So uh, I, I like to use a band in class. Uh, just a typical TheraBand uh, will work. Something that's not too strong, but it's got a little bit of a pull. This is a medium band. I also like to use two pound weights and one pound weights. And typically I'll use either a three pound or a four pound. Three is ideal, um, and we just need one of those. Sometimes I'll use uh, a Versa loop. So this is a loop, a band that you can um, just put over your legs and not have to tie it. If you only have this band, we can just tie it around your legs when we do some work on the outer, outer um, legs. So um, those are some of the really good things I have. Now also, if you have some back issues maybe uh, where you're a little bit um, sensitive in your lower back. Sometimes I will have people, once they're on the OOV, put their feet on a box or something like this. Now you don't have to have one just like this, but there's a lot of things around the house that you can use. You can use a step, step stool. Um, you can uh, build some books up. Just just get creative. You can even put your feet on um, on a, a block that you have around, um, some yoga blocks, that kind of thing will, will work as well. All right, so that's that's what I like to have. Also, a, um, a an inflated ball is helpful, uh, just to to give some different options for our classes. So if you have this, great. If you don't have this, maybe bring a towel, like a um, a beach towel or a um, a bath towel that you can roll up. Sometimes I'll use this to put between knees, and if you have a towel, you can use that instead. All right, so let's get started in learning how to get on the OOV. Uh, we use the OOV in different positions, but what I wanna show you today is how to get on it, lying in supine, meaning with your face up to the ceiling. So you're gonna put the OOV down, and we're gonna get on the big end first. So this is this end is, the large end, the small end, or we, sometimes we call this the tail, this is the saddle, okay? Your, the big end is gonna be where your, uh, your lumbar spine and your pelvis will be, and this end here will be supporting your uh, cervical spine, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit on it, and I like to tell people to actually sit on the floor with their hands behind them on the oof or on the floor. So whichever you're comfortable with, then you're gonna lift yourself up just a little bit and you'll feel that little tail, that um, end of the oove, okay, against your sacrum, right? Right um, at, the, at the base of your lower back, all right? So you're, you're supporting yourself with your hands and you're gonna roll back slowly, right? Now, if you have an issue with uh, 
flexion, I want you to roll back with as straight a back as you can. So rolling back, and then your head will land, okay? And like I said, you probably want something underneath your neck here. I didn't grab a towel, but I'll imagine I had a towel underneath my head, just folded up a hand towel to support my head. Now, the way we test if we're in the right place on the ooze is I'm going to bring one leg and then the other leg up into tabletop. It's important that you do one leg at a time. And um, I'm going to take note of what happens in my chest, my head, and my neck. Right. So if there's any tension as I do this, that means I need to move. I need to adjust. Right. So I'm going to show you an example of the way it would be if if you needed to move, all right? So if you lift one leg to tabletop and then you lift the other one and your head comes up, then we need to move you on the oof. Even if your head doesn't come up and you feel tension, we still need to move you. So what I'm gonna have people do if they have that is they're gonna put weight into their heels and they're just gonna lift up their pelvis a little bit and scoot themselves this way, up towards the tail, the little end of the oove, all right? So I'm gonna try it again, and let's see how I do on this time. So you're gonna bring one leg up, and then the other one. And I had just a little bit of a tension, so I'm gonna move myself just a tad. Fraction, hair, okay? And then I'm gonna bring one leg up, and then the other. Now that was perfect. So if, it's in the, if you're in the right place, it should feel effortless to bring those legs up, right? The work is all here in the, in the abdominals, uh, not in the neck or the shoulders, right? I do have my hands down, but I'm not even pushing uh, on the floor when I bring my legs up if I'm in the correct place because I'm using my abdominals to do that, all right? So this is where we do a lot of work, lying and supine. And when I'm cueing people, I'm going to cue them to go very, very slowly, okay? So I'm going to show you an example of oof speed. Oof speed is like this, really slow. So imagine yourself as a snail, right? You're moving at snail speed. And the reason we do this is because we want to have good movement, first of all, but we're trying to um, stretch and lengthen the fascia. All right, so we're reaching long, and when we do that, with and typically I would have weight in people's hands, once we've done this a little bit, holding it, and then slowly bringing it back up. And it takes patience at first, because we're not used to moving this slow, all right? So moving slowly, and I will, remind people very often to move slower. So this would be a speed that you would not want to do. So you wouldn't want to do like this. That's too fast, right? All right. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Now when you get off of the oove, unless I cue you differently, all right, if you have low bone density, I want you to roll off, okay? Roll off to the side. That's also if you have low bone density, that's the way we're gonna mount the oof. We're gonna get on top of it that way. So you're going to lie on your side, all right? So if, definitely if you have osteoporosis, you're gonna lie on your side, put the oove, um, the big part of the oove in your low back, and you're just gonna roll onto it, all right? From there, from there you're gonna adjust so that you don't have to flex your spine. All right, so again, rolling off just like that, and then we'll come up. So that is how you would get on the oove and get off the oove. So hopefully um, that's helpful for you in watching this before class so that you're ready um, to join our class.